In lesson two, we're going to discuss the order of operations. The reason for this is because when we do, when we perform two or more operations, two or more mathematical operations, one after the next, we need a particular order. If we didn't, then people may come up with different answers doing, using all the correct math. For example, 2 times 5 squared. Is this answer 50 or 100? First, let me remind you what 5 squared means. It means 5 times 5, which equals 25. If it was 5 cubed, meaning 5 to the third power, it would be 5 times 5 times 5. That's just a little reminder. Let's take a look. One person may wish to do this problem from left to right. That's the way we speak English. That's the way we should do our math. It seems reasonable enough. 2 times 5 squared. We're going to do 2 times 5, which is 10, and then 10 squared, which is 10 times 10, which equals 100. That is one possible answer, one plausible answer. Another person may say, you know what, I want to do the exponents first. I want to take care of this little thing up here first, and then I'll do multiplication. So this person would do 5 squared, since this 2 is on the 5 only, he or she would do 5 squared, 5 times 5, which is 25. And then take that 25 and multiply it by 2, which would give 50. Which one is correct? Mathematically speaking, both are. But mathematicians, math teachers, math students worldwide have to be on the same page. You can't write this on the board and leave people to do what they want because each person will come up with a different number. A problem like this, you could be sure, a classroom full of 20 people, there will be 20 different answers if everybody just decided to do the problem the way they wished. So we're going to follow this rule here, PEMDAS. This is an acronym, a little mnemonic device, something to help you remember the order of operations. P stands for parentheses. We do that which is in parentheses first before we do anything else. Then we go to exponents. Then we deal with the exponents. Then we do either multiplication or division. That depends on what comes first from left to right. We'll get to that soon. And then we do addition and or subtraction. When it comes to addition and subtraction, you really don't, the order really doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, so we have PEMDAS. We're going to start with parentheses. For this problem here, we have a 5. Yes, there is a 5 in parentheses, but we can't do anything within it. Therefore, we could just scrape out the P. Parentheses, for all intents and purposes, are done. Now we go to the exponents. 5 squared means 25. As you're going through these problems, just rewrite everything else. Don't skip steps here. If you do, you're probably going to get the wrong answer. Exponents are done. There's only multiplication left. There's nothing more to do than to multiply 2 times 25, which is 50. 50 is therefore the correct answer and not 100. If you follow this rule, you will get the right answer every single time. Incidentally, your calculators are programmed with PEMDAS. So if you start typing things in incorrectly, and you don't put parentheses where they belong, you're going to get the wrong answer. We'll see this as we go through the course. Let's try problem number two. The first thing to do here is don't skip any steps. Write the word PEMDAS just to help guide you as you go through this. And then scratch each letter out as you perform the operation. So we're going to write negative 5 times 5 minus 2 squared. Here we do have parentheses, 5 minus 2 rewrite everything else. I mean literally rewrite everything else. 5 minus 2 is equal to positive 3. Now we go to exponents. Negative 5 times 3 squared. Remember 3 squared means 3 times 3 which is 9. Exponents are done. The only thing left to do is multiply. Negative 5 times positive 9. If you'll recall, negative times positive is always negative. 5 times 9 is 45, therefore the answer is negative 45. 